I believe that everybody in this room, every single person in this room would love to find a way to make the world a better place. The daunting thing about this is that we think, how can I do that? I can barely find a way to make myself a better person. Never mind another person or the rest of the world. We think if we don't cure cancer or build a million pound company, that we can never truly make an impact. But I am here to tell you that the answers are hidden in plain sight. Sometimes it's right under our nose. We just have to open our eyes and see it. In my case, I took something I did every day of the week and I found a way to truly impact people. I found a way to impact entire communities. Sometimes these people were just down the road from where I lived. And sometimes these people were a world apart. But first, allow me to share a little bit about my own story. I grew up in a tough neighborhood, not far from here. I experienced high levels of trauma at a very young age. Life was hard. Sometimes I felt my life was unbearable. So I escaped to the British Army. This was one of the best decisions of my life because in the British Army, I found role models. In the Army, I learned the importance of structure. I went ice climbing in Canada. I went parachuting in Germany. And those experience, the experiences began to create some self-worth. And for the first time in my life, I began to treat myself with some respect. For the first time, I began to think that maybe, just maybe, I could be someone in this world. When it came time to leave the military, I wanted to make my own way in the world and really show I had what it took to succeed. I never anticipated how difficult leaving the forces would be. The structure I had craved all my life was gone and I felt lost. I felt lost until I found barbering. I set up a shop not far from here in Sale. And through hard work from myself and my team, we were able to create something solid and unique, a business we could all be proud of. When I realized that I had made it, I'd succeeded in surviving my challenging youth. I had succeeded in the military, and now I had succeeded as an entrepreneur. I should have been celebrating. Actually, I experienced a very real crisis. The trauma I experienced as a child created a level of compassion and understanding inside me that I cannot ignore. Because I've suffered, I recognize suffering in others. And in some cases, I can actually feel it. So I literally retreated to the woods. And just like in my army days, I set up camp in the isolation of the Lake District. I wanted answers. And in the beauty and the solitude of nature, I decided I was going to help our homeless community. And I had no idea where this would lead. I'm a proud Mancunian. I love this city. It broke my heart to see so many people living on our streets. 
Since 2010, homelessness in the UK has risen by 105%. In that same time period in Manchester, it's risen by 900%. So I took to the streets, offering haircuts, food, clothing, support, and advice. We began to make positive videos to spread awareness and encourage others to help. Our first video received 10 million views and I set up my foundation. BBC Three featured us in the Amazing Human series and that video has currently been viewed over 25 million times. We gathered support from our community. We began sharing our knowledge with politicians, associated charities and schools nationwide. We built an amazing relationship with our city's mayor, Andy Burnham, who is committed to ending rough sleeping. But most importantly, we built relationships with our homeless community. From the squats to the doorways, under the bridges and archways, they know us and they trust us. We regularly listen to their stories, to their problems, to their hopes and to their dreams. And we use that knowledge, along with our resources, to help people get to a better place. This is more than just a haircut. When we meet people where they're at and positively connect with them on a deep level, we can begin to bring them into the light. It's from that place that they can begin to think differently. And it's from that place that they can make a real and lasting change. I would like to share a story from the street with you all. One of my homeless friends was born heroin dependent. His mother was injected herself while she was pregnant with him and he was born an addict. By the age of 12, she was injecting him and sending him out on the streets to beg. With no positive influence in his life and no education, he never stood a chance. In our first meeting, we positively connected with him through cutting his hair and providing him food and warm clothing. We shared stories and we laughed. He said it was the first time he laughed in a long time. We dressed a wound on his leg which wouldn't heal because of his drug use. Over time, that wound became so badly infected that the doctor said he would have to remove his leg to save him. One day, I went to his usual spot and he wasn't there. He had died. I'm very proud of the fact that we brought some joy and some happiness to a human being who'd ever know, ever, already ever known pain in his short life. And he inspires me to continue what we've started. We also travel to refugee camps. I believe the power of human connection works anywhere in the world, even where there is a language barrier. I set up in this area in central Paris where there are 500 refugees sleeping rough, predominantly African males. 10 minutes into my first cup, I was completely surrounded by about 100 refugees and they all had this intense look on their face. I couldn't work out why. So I finished my first cup and I stood up. It was silent as they inspected my work and one by one, they all began to clap. I now know that they were looking to see if this white guy with a ginger beard could cut Afro hair. <laughs> so the guys, the guys were happy and they all wanted their name on the list. A couple of hours in, I began to feel 
quite overwhelmed by the sheer number of people wanting a cup. At that moment, this 15-year-old refugee from Guinea walked right up to me and he said, I'm a barber, I want to help you. I was so grateful for the help at this time. I got him some clippers, scissors, gowns, towels, everything he needed to cut. And we cut together the whole day. After a long day cutting on the streets of Paris, I donated the equipment to him. He couldn't believe that he had his own set of barbering equipment again. He knelt down and he carefully wrapped each piece of, piece of equipment in the towels we provided. It was a beautiful moment. We built on that trip with a trip to Calais and Dunkirk. We set up five barbers in the camps. We did hundreds of haircuts and we distributed food and clothing to the refugees. We distributed toys for the children. And I was so proud of each and every member of my team. They were all outstanding. Now I would like to invite you all to take part in a very simple and easy exercise. And if you play along, you will get much more out of it. Raise your hand if you're ready to take part. Whether you're here or watching this at home, take part and you will get much more out of it. Are you ready? Okay. Now I want you to sit forward, elbows on your knees, and put your head down. Now I want you to take three deep breaths. I want you to remember the most traumatic event that has happened to you. Really think about it. How did you feel then? Think about the pain. What did it take to pull yourself out? Did you feel like making a positive change in your life? Did you feel strong? Did you feel like you? I think it's fair to say that in this state, we all felt pretty useless. We can all sit back and open our eyes. Now everybody stand up. Now I want you all to stretch your bodies out. And shake off those memories. Shake them off. Now I want you to stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Shoulders back, chest out, and your chin up. And in this proud, strong position, as you take a deep breath, close your eyes. Now I want you to remember your greatest achievement. Maybe this was the birth of your child, a promotion, starting a business, falling in love and getting married, whatever it was, feel it. Live it like you're there. How did you feel then? Remember the joy and the happiness this brought to us. Did you feel positive? Did you feel strong? Did you feel like you? I believe in this state, we can do anything. We can open our eyes and sit down. This exercise is designed to demonstrate 
how we can change a person's state on the street and the refugee camps. Human beings in a bad state make bad decisions that sometimes violate who they really are. Human beings in a good state, we think differently and we make better decisions more in line with who we really are. Physiology says motion creates emotion. The way we use our bodies determines how we feel. We use this knowledge in conjunction with our skill as barbers to change a person's state. As each person sits in our chair, we pull their shoulders back. As we comb their hair, we lift their chin up. As the hair is removed, as we clean off the dirt, as our incredibly positive team affects each person in the chair, a beautiful and astonishing thing happens. They remember who they are. They reconnect with themselves and we see who that person was before it all went wrong. There is always a reason human beings find themselves in a dark place. None of us want to be there. We all have that in common. We all have a responsibility to lift others up. Somebody once said, when you change the things you look at, the things you look at change. When we all begin to look at each other as brothers and in sisters, we can change the entire world. We can ask ourselves, what is my purpose? How will I contribute to create change? How can we be the change we want to see in this world? Ultimately, my foundation is contributing to ending rough sleeping. And I know it can be done if we all contribute together. Businesses, charities, governing bodies, the general public, if we all pull in the same direction, we can look back one day and say, remember when we used to have people living on our streets. I have a dream that we used to have people living on our streets. In 2005, I visited a town in Alberta, Canada, and I spoke to rough sleepers there. That same town now has 0% homeless population. And if they can do it, so can we. My name is Jed King. Thank you so much for listening.